Welcome to the realm of heroes and monsters. Story time with your host, A.P. Fuchs. Stories of intrigue, stories of horror, stories of superheroics, stories of monsters. Get ready, the thrill ride begins. Hey everybody, welcome to a new edition of the Realm of Heroes and Monsters Storytime with A.P. Fuchs. So welcome to the show, thank you for being here. And I spent some time thinking about what I wanted to talk about, because as you know, we talk, you know, either superheroes or monsters, and then we talk some creative stuff, and then we do the story time. And so I thought, what am I going to talk about in terms of either heroes or monsters? And I've been watching the Saw movies. It's been a long time since I've seen them, but over time, when they, as they came out, you know, I was able to watch them all. And um, fairly recently, I saw Jigsaw, and I saw uh, Spiral, which is a, it's called uh, Taken from the Book of Saw. So it's Saw-esque, um, but it's not the same as a regular Saw movie. But the point is this, um, Jigsaw, the villain, the main villain, the guy that we met in the first movie, and has carried his legacy through uh, the rest of the movies. And I was thinking about Jigsaw and I thought, what a great killer, murderer, but at the same, well, we'll get there. So Jigsaw to me, I mean, he's brilliant, right? He's sick, yes, very sick um, and insane, but He's brilliant. He's smart. He's always at least two or three steps ahead of either the victims or the police trying to stop him. And he's thought of everything. Every loophole, every possible angle, he's got it covered. And that takes a smart mind to do that. And I thought to myself, what kind of a bad guy is Jigsaw? And I thought, you know what? This whole, this is perfect for this podcast, Jigsaw, because we're talking monsters because he is a monster. I mean, he's human, but he's in terms of his, his actions, that's, that's monstrous. But, um, so we got the monster part covered and then interesting enough, we got the villain part covered because he's the villain of the story. And one could argue because of his brilliance that he's a super villain, you know, as in, you know, Lex Luthor level, he may not be as rich, of course, but from a, mental capacity, intelligence point of view, uh, Jigsaw is right up there. And he also struck me as the kind of guy that if they really, like in film, if they really let the Joker do his thing in all his madness and sickness, um, I think the Joker would be very much like Jigsaw. Um, I mean, Joker, if you recall the comics, I mean, like he cut off his own face skin and, and some of the tissue and then like put it back on like a mask and like stapled it to himself so he had like a, a mask of his own face on his face like it, that's crazy right like that's absolutely insane never mind like the pain that would be involved and and knowing joker like he would somehow sickly relish in the pain he's inflicting upon himself actually there's a disorder i can't remember the name of it offhand you can google it but um there actually is a disorder where people do perform self-surgery. It's like a thing, like they have to, it's a compulsion. It's it's disturbing uh, to, to learn about um, because it does get graphic in terms of the types of surgeries that people put on themselves. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, it fits the Joker motif, which in turn fits back down uh, to Jigsaw. So we have Jigsaw here now as we labeled him just now as a basically a supervillain. But what's interesting is, and it's kind of ironic, is he's also an anti-hero. He also plays the other side of the coin, which is another reason why he it makes it so smart, right? Like for those who don't know, like Jigsaw's whole thing is he's not just some random serial killer who's just out to kill people in most slasher flicks, right? He's he has a point to what he's doing to people, and it's always about moral justice. It's always about what are you willing to give to make things right, at least to make things right slash atone for what you did in Jigsaw's eyes. And people don't really survive <laughs> well 
um, under those circumstances in the movies. Um, but there was one survivor. And, I mean, yeah, it, it kind of, and, and, and it's interesting, it pulled like a Harley Quinn where uh, the, the lady like kind of falls in love with the villain, right? And, but she said something, and this is in the first movie, and she, was, and she had survived one of Jigsaw's uh, trials. And she actually appreciated what he did, as horrific as her situation was and the trap that she was in, when it was all over and she was being interviewed by the police, she said one thing that, that sticks out and she said that he changed me. And she meant that in a positive way, that his mission to right the wrongs, to right your internal moral compass is worthy, valid, uh, pick a word. Um, but, but that's what it is. Like, that's what he's after. So it, it's interesting. Like, he's both this crazy supervillain, but at the same time, he's, uh, to a degree, okay, small degree, but uh, to a degree, he's also a heroic anti-hero. So, yeah, I, it, that movie, to me, like, teaches me, in terms of how I write my own villains, now we drift into creativity, how I write my own villains, because I've always maintained, and I do this with Red Saw in the Axie Man saga, where... I always thought, you know, the best villain ever is the villain that you can relate to, the villain who you can sympathize with, the imp the villain who you have some empathy with, and sometimes even compassion on. And it's basically the tragic villain, right? And then it's the idea of if you were to put yourself in that villain's shoes, would you act the same way? If you were looking through life, through their lens, through their pain, through their trauma, through their motivations, which are often rooted in trauma, um, would you act the same? And, you know, at least for me, when I've asked myself that question pertaining to certain villains, sometimes the answer is a definite no. But at other times, I go, you know what? Yeah, you know, I could, I could see how that circumstance could make my mind warped where what I'm about to do to somebody or a place or a thing is valid in my mind. It's morally correct in my mind, you know, based again, based upon uh, the previous, you know, the, uh, issues that um, the person has. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it. so again, coming back full circle, it's it ties right back into the whole jigsaw thing where yeah, here we are, you know, a, a guy who we can actually relate to, to a point, and at the same time, hate, because of the horrible things that he's done, but at the same time, again, his mission, right, so, yeah, anyway, if you haven't seen the movies, check them out for yourself, there's a bazillion of them, no, just kidding, number 10, uh, just came out in theaters, I haven't seen it yet, um, I'm waiting for it to start streaming, just because for me, it's, I've seen, you know, all the other movies, it's not worth it for me to pay the money to go see it on a big screen I don't need to my small screen or comparatively speaking rather call small screen at home is fine but anyway last episode I said there might be an announcement and there is here's the announcement it's very basic it's simple the announcement is this it's regarding season one of this show season one of this show is going to be 30 episodes long okay so I think yeah, we definitely got some weeks to go, but I'm hit, giving you a heads up ahead of time. Um, 30 episodes for season one, and we're going to continue with our flash fiction as we've been doing. And then so 30 episodes is going to end and season one is going to be done. And then we're going to take a month break, just, you know, have a breather room, that kind of thing. And then season two is going to start and we're going to pick up where we left off and Story time is going to keep going. And and then in terms of the pre-show or the pre-story time uh, aspect, that might get altered a little bit uh, to keep it fresh. You know, we want to keep the show fresh. We want to uh, not have you guys go, oh, A.B. Fuchs is talking about monsters again. Oh, he's talking about what he's creating again. You know what I mean? So, like, I want to make it interesting and keep it interesting. So, anyway, that's the announcement. 30 episodes, season one. Take a month off, and then we're going to come back for season two. All right, so that's why subscription to this podcast is so important. So please subscribe. It's very important. 
okay? And lastly, uh, you're just invited to come check out my Patreon page. I want you all to, uh, there's so much content there. There's not just the content that I normally put on the web, but there's content that's patron exclusive and there's lots of stuff for patrons. Like there's, there's uh, serial novels, there's essays, there's uh, artwork, there's behind the scenes, there's photography, there's special videos. Like, and this is all behind uh, the Patreon wall you gotta become a member to enjoy these things but yeah i want to invite you come join me it's, it's cheap it's five bucks a month you get a ton of content all the time all right so let's get into story time because that's what we're here for so here we go in three two and as my dad would say one and a half one and a quarter one Episode 18, 4. What people didn't know about Titus was that he used to have $4 million. Cash. The $4 million man, he used to call himself. Hitting $5 million had been the next goal. It didn't take much to make a million dollars, and it took even less effort to make three more million on top of that once he knew what he was doing. All it took were cash deals, flipping houses, a few back alley drops for illicit substances, hiring for little and profiting a lot, and minimal tax claims so the government knew he was working, but not the specifics. Throw in a few B&Es for sport where the cash would be kept and the goods pawned or sold, hitting four million happened fairly quickly. It took him about seven years. Would have been quicker had he invested the money, but that would leave a trail and create a few headaches, so why bother? No family. Didn't need one. Families cost money. So did friends. Didn't have those either. Titus lived poor. Old, small house. Coupons, dollar menu items, thrift store clothes, home garden, anything to save a buck. And he lined the walls of his 1908 character home with stacks of hundreds, fifties, and twenties. He had thought about stripping the place of the copper wiring. Copper was worth something, after all. But of all of his fix-it capabilities, electrician wasn't one of them, and the cost of the new wiring and labor wasn't worth the reward. Yet, it didn't take much to set the character home ablaze. Some short in the wire after startup from a blackout, and soon the walls were going. They were too hot by the time he tried to smash up the drywall and rescue his cash. Four million dollars gone up in flames the house had been shambles prior to the blaze and wasn't worth much he cleared around 60 grand in insurance money when all was said and done the money lasted a little while but was quickly spent on overpriced rent alcohol and gambling binges for an attempted quick rebuild of his wealth now there is nothing all Titus had to his name was the pocket full of change from standing on the curb at spotlights with a cardboard sign that said, Spare anything? Have a nice day. Cars went by, fancy ones, plain ones, old trucks and new trucks. Each person behind the wheel clearly content with their vehicle, maybe even their life. They had something, a job or a supportive significant other as evidenced by their car. Titus longed to have that sense of security again, but after losing everything, he barely had the strength to roll out from beneath the bus benches he found himself sleeping under. Those people in those cars had something, even simply something to sit on. All he had was a pocket full of change and rubbery scarred hands from trying to smash the flame-covered drywall with his fists. Four million dollars. Titus reached into his pocket and pulled out the day's take. Four dollars and quarters, dimes, and nickels. But today, that four bucks felt like four million. He can get a cheap sandwich and a coffee, his first meal in two days. For so long, he couldn't get over losing all those bills, nightmares haunted with images of fiery hundreds and fifties, and burning fingers as he smashed into the drywall only to pull up fistfuls of ash. He figured God had a twisted sense of humor letting him get burned now instead of later. But that four dollars, the change in his hand suddenly felt heavier. 
Four bucks to get a meal. Four bucks to eat like a king, though being a pauper. A street king. Four bucks. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. It's always a pleasure to have you. Doing this week by week has is, is been wonderful. I really enjoy it, and I hope you've been enjoying it too. I hope you've been enjoying the story time. I hope you've been enjoying the little bit of the 8 to 10 minute uh, sort of pre-show show, show um, and that sort of thing. So uh, thank you for tuning in, and uh, we're going to see you next week, of course, with another story. And in the meantime... Uh, pass this podcast around share it with your friends to, you know if they know uh if they're into uh, heroes and monsters tell them about it because that's what we talk about here you know same with the stories the stories are geared in that genre so yeah invite them to join and uh, again don't forget to subscribe to the channel it's important because then you won't miss anything so we'll see you next week have a good week stay safe take care of each other be kind go out of your way at least once to do something nice for somebody else even if it costs you a little bit all right. Take care, guys. Bye.